एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द कोड वर्स चैनल आई होप यू गाइस आर डूइंग एक्सट्रीमली वेल सो टुडे विल बी द फोर्थ लेक्चर ऑफ द प्राइम सीरीज एंड द फर्स्ट लेक्चर यू डिड लर्न अबाउट प्राइम नंबर्स फैक्टर्स देन वी डिड अ प्रॉब्लम ऑन दैट ऑन द सेकंड लेक्चर यू डिड लर्न अबाउट द सीव टेक्निक करेक्ट इन द थर्ड लेक्चर वी डिड सॉल्व कपल ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स ऑन द सीव टुडे वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट प्राइम फैक्टराइजेशन एंड आई विल बी टीचिंग यू द ऑप्टिमाइजेशंस ऑन प्राइम फैक्टराइजेशंस what can appear in competitive coding or in coding rounds now before that let's create a ritual today right now you see my videos correct now after my every video ends if you have understood the entire concept everything make sure you drop in a comment as understood in the comment section or if you are wishing to comment in hindi samajh aa gaya kyunki karte hain ye ritual shuru karte hain अपने वीडियोस पे आई वांट दिस रिचुअल टू बी डन आफ्टर द वीडियो मेक शर यू कमेंट ओके सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग ऑफ विद दिस वीडियो दिस विल बी फोर्थ लेक्चर सो द प्रेरिकेट्स आर द प्रीवियस थ्री लेक्चर सो मेक शर यू वॉच दैट सो माय नेम इज राज विक्रमादित्य आई एम जनरली नोन एज स्ट्राइवर इन द प्रोग्रामिंग कम्युनिटी आई एम अ कम्प्यूटर प्रोग्राम करेंटली आई एम वर्किंग एज अ सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट इंजीनियर एट मीडिया डॉट नेट डायरेक्ट आई प्राइड आई एज वर्किंग एट एमजन आई एम रेटेड कैंडिडेट मास्टर एट कोर्ट फोर्स आई एम ऑल्सो सिक्स स्टार एट कोर्ट शेफ and i have a couple of years of experiences of teaching competitive programming i also have a youtube channel which has around 90000 plus subscribers the subjects that i'm going to majorly take at this channel and it plus is competitive programming data structure algorithms c++ and interview preparation so as you know the fourth lecture will be on prime factorization practice problems correct after that we have one more lecture now the main thing about an academy is you don't have to buy individual courses it's a kind of a netflix plan if you take up the subscription you get access to all the courses on the platform and all the previous courses that have been taken up by any of the educator so the courses are of uh, sorry the subscription are of 12 months 6 months 3 months 1 months the costing as you can see is on the screen so you need to apply the coupon code striver yes just note that down striver make sure you apply it in order to get an additional 10% discount so yeah and if you're new to our channel please make sure you subscribe to this and make sure that bell icon is pressed because i'm going to bring more lectures this way coming month lot of more lectures so make sure the bell icon is pressed and you're subscribed to this channel so that you understand it and yeah share this channel in your friends because you're going to teach conceptually these are going to be premium lectures you don't get a short recorded lecture these are premium lectures where you talk about everything we talk about intuition thought process and everything so make sure you share this channel as much as you can so today's uh, today's lecture is going to be focused on prime factorization of a number what is a prime factorization of a number for an example if i give you something like a 30 and ask you can you prime factorize it for me and uh, in school you would have done that right 30 divided by 2 15 divided by 3 5 divided by 5 so the prime factorization of 30 is 2 cross at 3 cross at 5 everyone would have done that right so if i do give you 48 the number is 48 and ask you the prime factorization of it it be like let's divide it by 2 24 let's divide it by 2 12 let's divide it by 2 6 let's divide it by 2 3 So it's a two to the power four into three. So you have you would have done this prime factorization, isn't it? So what I want you is to write a code which prints all the prime factors of a given number n. It will be like Strava. It's easy. I'm gonna run a big of n loop and I'll ask how. It will be like Strava. Why did you run a loop like this? It'll start from for loop equal to i equal to you know the first factor or prime factor starts from two. and i'm going to go on till i less than n i plus plus i might say ki from i equal to 2 to n everything is not a prime uh, so that that i'll come across to that so what you'll do is if that number is divisible by i if that number is divisible by i you going to print that number i again in java in java is system dot out dot println in c++ it is c uh, c out you going to print that number and i'm going to get n equal to n by i that's what you're going to do now you might say ki striver we have to print prime factors so how will prime factors lie between 2 to n because it has every number remember the sieve concept if we are dividing by 2 it will automatically make sure 4 6 8 10 all the multiples of 
will be taken care of that will be applied let's take an example and check it out let's take an example like 48 and then probably you can take an example like 30 so if i take 48 first what is the value of i that's 2 so what we do is 48 modulo 2 equal to equal to 0 correct print i so 2 is printed next 48 equal to 48 by 2 so the number 48 will become 24 so n becomes 24 perfect perfect next again 24 modulo it's a while loop modulo 2 correct divides print i again print 2 again again 24 modulo uh, divided by 2 it becomes 12 perfect perfect next 12 modulo 2 again divides print 2 12 divided by 2 this becomes 6 nice next comes again 6 divided by 2 equal to equal to 0 so again print 2 this becomes 6 by 2 number becomes 3 next 3 modulo 2 equal to equal to 0 no so if it is a no goes out comes back i plus plus so the i becomes 3 next this will be 3 lesser than equal to now the value of n is 3 3 next go inside is 3 modulo 3 0 yes it is yes it is so print 3 next 3 equal to 3 by 3 so the i becomes 1 next when you come across this will be 1 modulo 3 no while loop will go out i will increase to 4 and this will be 4 lesser than equal to 1 because n has reduced to 1 doesn't doesn't so the moment the for loop ends you can say you have printed your prime factorization of a given number perfect you have printed the prime factorization to the given number what is the time complexity that you took in order to print it it will be like it's definitely not big of n because you are you're using a division operator and something like that as you saw over here the number of steps that you took was one step two step three step four step in five steps i think you are able to do it you did not run a loop for 48 steps that's for sure you did not run a loop for 48 so is it is it bigo of 5 or is it bigo of 48 if i ask you uh because why not n square you have a for loop you have a while loop why not n into an n square because obviously the while loop is making sure n is reduced and over here there is an n check so the external for loop which is running till n the while is making sure n is reduced so the external for loop runs for lesser number of times makes understandable so that is why it's not n square but what is the worst case what is the worst case if i think about can you tell me what is the worst case if you just give it a thought maybe like what if it's a prime what what if it's a prime number so what we'll do is we'll try to take something as a prime number and see what happens let's take n equal to 13 that's a prime number so if i change the color this will start from 2 will 2 divide no Go to 3, will 3 divide? No. Go to 4, will 4 divide? No. Go to 5, will 5 divide? No. Will 6 divide? No. Will 7 divide? No. So on. Will th the moment the i becomes 13, there is a comparison 13 lesser than 13. Then 13 will get divided. So at the end, 13 will get divided. So can I say it's a big O of n's at the worst case? As you can see, when I took a prime, it ended up being a big O of n solution, isn't it? So what I can say is the time complexity indeed is a big O of n time complexity in order to check, uh, in order to print the prime factors. Makes absolute sense, right? That's a big O of n. Can I optimize this? Can I optimize this? I think I can. I think I can. How will I optimize this? That's the big question. So what if I run my loop? What if I run my loop till square root? Because in the prime class, you saw the factors, the factors, or as you can say, prime factors for a number, for a number, apart from itself, I repeat, for a number, apart from itself, the prime factor will be lesser than square root of n. Makes uh, sense if I, if you think on this, does this make sense? For any number, if I call, a, call out a prime factor, it has to be lesser than or equal to square root of n. There's absolutely no doubt in that, right? So apart from the number itself, as I said, 
for 13 uh, 13 is the prime factor itself that is a different case but for every other prime factor other than himself other than himself it's going to be less than equal to square root of n uh, again simple maths so can we use this property yes we can and can i optimize this to something like for i equal to 2 and instead of going till n instead of going till n can i just run it till uh, square root of n uh, let's see if that works can i run till square root of n and i'll do the same thing i'll do the same thing where i say because for every number n if i is a factor i'm going to print i'm going to print i yes i'll, I'll definitely print i and once i've printed i i'll keep dividing it by i perfect I'll, I'll divide it by perfect so will this work yes this will work but there's a problem over here it will only give factors something like till i till i like till square root of n not beyond that so we'll take a test case and we'll see if there are any other cases that we have to add so let's take a uh, case as 13 itself 13 itself let's take 13 to start off with so if we take 13 i'll start from 2 no one divides i'll take it to 3 no one divides the moment it reaches 4 4 into 4 lesser than equal to 13 is false because 4 into 4 is 16 that's false so in order to print 13 can i say at the end of the day if n is greater than 1 that's a factor of itself because if i'm dividing if i'm dividing if i'm dividing it has to be reduced to 1 at the end and if it has not been reduced the number itself is the prime factor of itself correct so that's why this case has been added let's take a couple of more examples and try to do a dry run of it so that you get a clarity okay let's take an example where i say n is 100 and let's try to do a dry run okay so if n is 100 uh, we'll we'll start with 2 does uh, 2 divides 100 definitely so you'll print 2 next n will get reduced by 50 i hope you can follow print i and then a division by that i again the while loop will come across 50 is divisible by 2 yes so you'll print it next it will become 25 next 25 modulo 2 no so i'll come back over here and this will i will become 3 this time we'll check for 3 into 3 lesser than equal to 25 n has reduced remember n has reduced to 25 now you're looking for prime factors of 25 not 100 that's the that's the stuff you're looking for 25 not 100 so you have reduced it to 25 correct so what you'll do is uh, you'll go on to uh, 3 25 modulo 3 does it make sense no so you'll come back 4 4 into 4 lesser than 25 yes 25 modulo 4 nah again as you see since 2 divided 4 will never divide next i will become 5 5 into 5 lesser than 25 yes it is comes across 25 modulo 5 yes next 25 divided by 5 next again 5 modulo 5 perfect makes sense again print it next 5 divided by 5 1 at the end the number becomes 1 and over here 1 modulo 5 no so over here the it will become 6 and 6 into 6 lesser than equal to 1 so the fall loop is over so as i can see if i do this step and obviously at the end it will be n greater than 1 then uh, print n that's the step you have to add if i do this if i do this i think my job will be done my job will be done so that's one case let's take another case where you will see that even if the number is not prime then also this is executed even if the number is not prime then also that is executed so let's quickly erase this so that we can definitely start off with one more okay so let's take something as n equal to 35 okay and now let's start off i will be 2 will it divide no i will be 3 will it divide no i will be 4 will it divide definitely not obviously definitely not i will be 4 5 will it divide yes 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 n is 35 which will be divided so you'll print out 5 divide gets divisible by 5 becomes 7 7 modulo 5 will that work no goes back i becomes 6 6 cross 6 lesser than 7 will that work out no so the moment you got a prime as you can see it doesn't works out 
and at the end since the last guy was prime you have to come across here and you have to print 10 so 5 and 7 you got the prime factorization of 35 that's a 5 cross 7 so that is why this actually works because every number has a prime factorization that is lesser than or equal to square root of n that's why this algorithm works in such a best possible way of square root of n so i've optimized i've optimized from big o of n to something like square root of n okay so that's what i've done so this is the best possible case that you can do if if it has something as a single number is given like in case of queries you have to optimize this but if a single number is given and they're asking you to print the prime factorization this is the best that you can do okay so now let's uh, come to something which is performing queries as you saw in prime i'll give you the same question okay and i'll tell you that given test cases and there will be test cases and it'll be given numbers for every number you have to print the prime factorization for every number you have to print the prime factorization for an example take this input 3 you have a 15 you have a 20 and let's assume you have a 30 so for 15 you have to print 3 5 for 20 you have to print 2 2 5 for 30 you have to print uh, 2 3 5 okay that is how you will print the prime factorizations of a number now the test cases i repeat the test cases can be near about 10 to the power 6 the number can be somewhere between 10 to the power 6. So that's what the constraints are. The test cases can be 10 to the power 6. The numbers can be 10 to the power 6. So obviously, if you apply the brute force of using the square root method of printing the prime factors, can I say the complexity of every query will be square root n? Because every query is going to take a square root of n technique. That's, that's obvious, right? Every query is going to take a square root of n. So the total complexity will be t into square root of n which is somewhere around 10 to the power 6 t is 10 to the power 6 if you carefully observe the square root of n becomes square root of 10 to the power 6 hence it becomes 10 to the power 6 it is square root of 10 to the power 6 that's 10 to the power 3 which is near about 10 to the power 9 operations which is near about 10 to the power 9 operations so what verdict will you get if you use the standard technique you will get it as TLE that is time limit exceeded because at max at one second we can do somewhere something around 10 to the power 8 operations we're gonna get TLE obviously this method is not going to work so before teaching you the optimal technique before teaching you the optimal technique let me ask you a very simple question what is the maximum number of prime factors a number can have if I give you what is the maximum number of prime factors a number can have for a hundred it was as you see 2 into 2 into 5 into 5 this guy had four prime factors. For a number like 16, it has 2 cross a 2 cross a 2 cross a 2. Again, it has 4. For a number like 32, this will have 5 prime factors. If I ask you, what is the maximum number of prime factors a number can have? What will be the answer? What if I say the answer is, the maximum number of prime factors a number can have is log base 2n. You will be like, why? Why is that? Now, the smallest prime factor a number can have is 2. So if I take 16, that has four prime factors, which is log base 2 of 16, which is log base 2 of 16. For 32, you had 5, which is log base 2 of 32. So instead of 2, instead of 2, if you take bigger numbers, if you take bigger numbers, the prime factors will reduce now. It will reduce now because you're doing multiplication of Smaller numbers like 2, 2, 2, that's why the prime factors are increased, log base 2 n. But if you multiply smaller prime factors, don't you think the number of prime factors will shrink? So can I say the maximum prime factors any number can have is log base 2 n because in other cases, if the numbers are big, if the prime factors are big, the quantity will be less. Make sense? So the number of prime factors at max is log base 2 n. Remember this, we're going to use this while solving. Cool. So I've, ta I've taught you that. So you have analyzed the time complexity. Obviously, we have analyzed the time complexity. Now it's time to analyze what will be the best method in order to solve this problem. Okay. So do you remember Sieve, guys? Do you remember Sieve? Lecture 2, where I taught you Sieve. We're going to implement that. Yes, we're going to implement that. But we're going to be smart while implementing that. So as usual, we will do the brute force. And we will have the Sieve ready. And while the query comes, we're then going to start answering. I hope you're very familiar with queries now. That's, that is the case, right? You are um, much familiar with queries now.
Let's take this array. So what I'll do is I'll just draw it or uh, whatever it is. We'll not target it 25 this time because that's going to be a huge number. By the way, please make sure after this video, comment to me what you have to write. Understood or samaj agya because that is what I'll be reading. Please make sure you comment it so that I can I can force the team to like I can ask the team to bring more and more videos. I'm planning a recursion series, so if you help me with a comment, I'll definitely plan it very soon. Okay, recursion series from basic to medium to backtracking to advance everything I'm gonna plan okay but for that I need a comment uh, like if you have understood if you haven't understood then don't comment if you have understood then only comment okay that's the sieve that's the sieve so what I'll do is I'll try to I'll try to have the sieve ready with the numbers itself like I'll do it like 0 1 2 like keep a sieve and initialize it with the numbers itself okay that's 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 what I'm going to do and we can call this as smallest prime factor array SPF array generally known as the SPF array which is the smallest prime factor array okay I'll take this as the smallest prime factor array I think we have done some misnumbering so let's correct it quickly over there we have done 222 so let's correct it quickly it's 23 24 25 I uh, will press it at 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay. So we have, okay, we have our 25 uh, size array, right? 26 size array ready. So basically, what we will do is we'll try to store the smallest prime factor of every number. So can I say we start with 2? What are the multiples that 2 marks? It'll be like 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and so on. So we'll go and mark 4 as 2. We'll go and mark 6 as 2. We'll go and mark 8 as 2. We'll go, go and mark 10 as 2. We'll go and mark 12 as 2. We'll go and mark this as 2. We'll go and mark this as 2. Basically, you're saying this is the first guy who marked. So, isn't this the smallest prime factor of you? I'll be like, yes, yes. Because this is the first guy who marked, and this is definitely my smallest prime factor or minimum prime factor. So, why don't I mark that? So, just mark it. Cool, I've marked that. Next. Can I say next will be 3? And for 3, I start with 9. 9 is not marked. So I'll say 9, your smallest prime factor is 3. For sure, because you haven't been marked. You haven't been divided by anyone. So your smallest factor is 3. Will you say that to 12? 12 will say, hey, dude, I already have 2 marked. Like 2 has already marked me. Who are you? You get lost. So 3 will not mark him. Right? Next, I'll come to 15. 15 will be like, no one has marked me. You can mark me. Right? Say so mark it. Next, 18. It'll be like, 2 has already marked me. He's my smallest fine factor, not 3. 3, you go away. So, I'll not mark it. 21, I'll mark it. 24, no need. So, I marked it. Correct? Next, let's check it out for 5. Where will you start marking? 25. So, I'll go to 25 and say 5. So, I made sure that I have traversed. In sieve, you know, you started from 2, then you went to 3, then 4, 5. And you stopped at 5. Why? Because the size is 25. And you stopped at square root of 25. Again, the same method. So what I've done is I've made sure I've marked everyone's, everyone's smallest prime factor. How will that help? How will that help? Let's see how will that help. If I take a number like 24, okay, and I want to prime factorize it, what I'll do is I'll start looking at 24. I'll just give a look at 24 and I'll find a number like 2. So I know instead of iterating on the for loop, instead of iterating on the for loop, I actually know which is my smallest prime factor. Previously, if you look at this logic, you have to iterate on the for loop. Yeah, who is the one who is dividing? Iterate, iterate and find it out. Iterate, iterate and find it out. Over here, do you need to iterate? No, you have already pre-stored it. Yeah. So you get the pre-stored value too. Right? So once you have got the pre-stored value too, this 24 gets divided by 2. So this becomes 12. Now you again go to 12 and say, hey, who is your smallest frame factor? He will say, hey, 2. So I will take that 2. I will divide it again by 2. So this will reduce to 6. Again, it will go to 6 and say, oh, by the way, this will be 2. Uh, marked it wrong. So you will go to 6 and you will say, who is the smallest prime factor? He will say 2. So I will take that 2. Again, you will divide by 2. You will get 3. Next, you will go to 3 and say, who is the smallest prime factor? He will say 3. So I will take 3 and again divide it by 3. So this will be 1. 
द मोमेंट यू रीच वन प्राइम फैक्टराइजेशन इज ओवर द मोमेंट यू रीच वन द प्राइम फैक्टराइजेशन इज ओवर लेट्स टेक वन मोर एग्जाम्पल सेवेंटीन एट्स अ प्राइम नंबर एट्स अ प्राइम नंबर सो कैन आई से द प्राइम नंबर इज मार्क विद द प्राइम नंबर इट सेल्फ बिकॉज इट हैज नो प्राइम फैक्टर्स obviously something like a 17 is definitely not going to have any prime factors it will only have 17 17 will say i am the prime factor myself why don't you print it yourself and divide this one over since i know since i know any number can have a maximum of log base 2 and prime factor maximum i'm not saying it will have i'm saying at maximum it will have there's a difference between saying it will and it might have right it might have at max of b go of log base 2 and the reason we already explained over here so can i say can i say the number of divisions that i will do the number of divisions that i will do will be hardly will be hardly log n so can i say i can prime factorize a number per query and log base 2 n with a pre computation of a sieve which is n log log n can i or not if i do a pre computation of this much Can I answer my query in log base two n? I'll be like, yes, we can. You all, did you learn something new? Definitely, yes. So now I'll move to the code and I'll try to code this. Okay, I'll move to the code. Uh, I'll try to code this. Brute force, I'm not coding because ah, uh, for loop you can write it yourself. So again, you'll take the test cases. So let's take the test cases. You'll have the query uh, test cases loop. Again, I'll take the i n d n. And I'll have the c in of n, and then you have to print the prime factorization. You have to print uh, the prime factorization, correct? So print the prime factorization. But before that, you have to pre-generate sieve. You have to create the sieve. You remember? So let's create the sieve. So I'll say void. I'll say create sieve, and I'll say let's assume n is n is given as ten to the power six at the worst case. So let's take n equal to ten to the power six. Is that ten to the power six? Yes, it is. And I'll create a sieve of ten to the power six, or n plus one. Okay. So what was the first step that I did? I started with one, and I went on till n. And what did I do? I made sure everyone was initialized with the number itself, with the number itself. Done. Next, I did a sieve. Simple. If you remember, the sieve is very simple. Starts from a uh, two. Goes on till square root of n, goes like this, and if 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 sieve of i is equal to equal to i itself. Generally in sieve, you checked for primary check. It was done as if you remember the primary check was done as true. But over here, can I say if the number over here? Can I say if the number is marked as itself? 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 Can I say it's a prime? Yes, I can say. So what I'll do is, if the number is marked as itself, it's a prime. Then what I'll do is, I'll go to its corresponding multiples. That is something like this, and j plus equal to i. And what I'll do is, if c of j is equal to equal to j, that means this is the first time when someone is coming. Yes, this is the first time when someone is coming. And if that's the case. You say sieve of j. Hey, why don't you store it as i? Or probably if I just replace it as SPF, you can just call it as the smallest prime factor to be just uh, just making sure the names are correct so that we names are meaningful, nothing else. I'm saying smallest prime factor of j. Yo, i. And we're done. We have we have done this. Our pre-computation is done. Now can I say I know I'm gonna divide n. I'm gonna divide n till it's not one. I know that. So what I'll do is c out of. I know the smallest prime factor is n. So that's the smallest prime factor. I know that. And the n gets divided by the smallest prime factor. So why don't I do that? Once I've done that, I can print an n l. So that for every query, all the prime factors are printed in space, space, space. Once all are printed, you do an n l. So log n. This is log n. Yeah. This is b go of Log n, and this is something as n log of log n. So this is how you can answer queries in big of log. So in whatever problems you see prime factorization, make sure you use this concept. 
so guys uh so guys i hope you have understood the entire yes entire concept of prime factorization from n to square root of n to the log n per query just in case you did please make sure you like this video and let's follow our ritual you should comment understood or samaj aagaya in the comment section with this let's wrap up this video if you're new to our channel make sure you subscribe to it press the bell icon to know when the lecture 5 is coming let's wrap up this video bye bye take care stay home